Welcome! This tutorial on developing research questions with Varkel is part of the Querying Art History Data on the Web video tutorial series. It is produced in cooperation with the University of Jena and the project Digital for Humanities – Digital Research Methods in Art History. The video tutorial series Querying Art History Data on the Web contains various methods of querying, modeling and analyzing art history data. Video number three deals with a practical example, developing research questions with Sparkle. We will first look into the computer language Sparkle and its setup, and then into various sites which will allow Sparkle queries through endpoints. What is Sparkle? It stands for Simple Protocol and RDF Query Language. So what does it mean? You may have heard about the semantic web an extension of the web which, with the aim to put data into relations and make this machine readable. Ontologies and vocabularies are helping here to define data and their meaning. The relationship is possible to link data. When these data are described in RDF, the research description framework, it becomes searchable for specific query languages like Sparkle. In this tutorial, we are querying specific data coming from cultural heritage institutions like museums. They offer a Sparkle endpoint, which is the kind of gate from where the query of the institutional internal database may happen. A Sparkle query looks like this. Data is described through RDF as the respective metadata model. For the query, this data is put into triples of subject credit card and object. Here you may get an idea why this relates to the semantics. When you have built your triples this way and you, uh, you query the Sparkle endpoint, the results will probably be in one of these formats, JSON, XML or TSV. We said that the semantic web relies on ontologies and vocabularies. Here we are seeing two examples. FUAF, which stands for friend of a friend, and CDOC, CRM, conceptual reference model. Both are widely used. What you are seeing here is only a very small portion of their entries. FUAF is not as substantial as CDOC CRM. You will find the most used categories in an ontology entry, like person, primary topic, and image. CDOC CRM reflects the whole cosmos of categories and their possible relations. It is built with entities and properties which are designed for RDF triples. The entities can be subject or objects, but the property serves as predicate. You need to know these codes to build a triple. CDOC CRM is a quite complex ontology and it is therefore easier to start with others more appropriate for beginners. Let us look at a simple query. It consists of three basic entry categories prefix, select and where. The prefix lists the ontology we are querying with its shortcuts and its URL, to which relates the following query and its triple vocabulary. In this case, the prefix relates to FUAF. Select lists the results we would like to know about. In this case, it is the name. In order to retrieve a result, it must start with a question mark. Under where, we need to build the query within curly brackets. The triple is built of a person with a question mark as object, the ontology with its entry as the predicate, and the object with a question mark. All three words need to be part of the fourth ontology which is listed above. The query form select returns a table as a result. You could also choose different query forms like construct which returns RDF or Ask, which returns a true or false result. Describe, which returns an RDF graph. You could also choose a different prefix if FOAF does not contain the parameters you are looking for. It is often useful to combine prefixes and use a few of them at the same time, and this gives you more possibilities. We will come back to this later. In the meantime, you can look at this list of common prefixes and ontologies, but be in mind that there are many more than these. What the Sparkle query does is querying data which can be set in relation to one another. 
This is what the semantic web is about. Data becomes part of knowledge graphs. There is more information on this at the end of this tutorial. Here you find a list of useful Sparkle endpoints. There are general Sparkle query endpoints and institutional endpoints. Through general endpoints like Virtuoso, you can query other institutional endpoints by listing their URL. For now, we are more interested in endpoints of cultural heritage institutions. I have listed some here, which are good for beginners, as they include error messages warning you when your query working will not probably uh, be working. Let us start with some simple queries using the two cultural heritage endpoints of the Fondazione Zeri in Faros. The Fondazione Zeri is a photo archive in Bologna in Italy. Faros is a consortium of 14 photo collections. The endpoints combine the collection through one search entry. We start by analyzing the simple Sparkle query. You will recognize several prefixes referring to different ontologies. It does not matter how many prefixes are listed, as long as the ones you will be using in your query below are listed among them. The field select indicates that results must refer to a list of names, works and titles. The WHERE question is formed with curly brackets around. We are questioning the name of a person referring to the ontology for, and we are querying a work at the title through the ontology RDFS. Each query has to be finished with a dot. For demonstrative reasons and to speed up the process, we are limiting the query to a result list of 100 entries. When we now go and execute the query, it returns a result in the form of a table, as you can see below. Here we are looking at the slightly more complex query, including the gender of the person, because we want to limit our result list to women who are artists. With the Pharos endpoint, we are trying a similar search. We are looking at the artist and the title of his work, and also the artist Uri. This is a link which takes us to all of these entries in this database, showing us that the query is based on a knowledge graph of Pharos. In our query, every single query is finished by a dot. Note also that you can combine several queries in one query string. Here we want to get more information concerning an artwork, and therefore we are looking for who has influenced an artwork together with by whom it was created. This is useful because the data couldn't be coded either way, and we want to make sure that we are getting all the relevant results. On the next example, we have added the repository where the photograph is held. A lot of additional steps can be imagined from here. For a beginner, it is useful to add more queries step by step and see if they work. Note that not every prefix can be used for all Sparkle endpoints. Usually the general information on the endpoint lists the ontologies that are considered. Another option is to add a prefix and search within the appearing box among the list of available prefixes. The Faro's Art Research Sparkle endpoint is still in beta version and a lot will change in the near future. Check the site's about page to keep, keep, be updated with developments. You will also find some useful information about how to compose Sparkle queries and which results you can expect to get. Faro's art research has a focused similarity matching of duplicate catalog entries. The endpoint is tackled around these questions. The complex example queries on the help page will guide you to this direction. Now that you have an idea what a Sparkle endpoint can be used for, you should try on your own. Here are some tasks to get yourself familiar with these endpoints. Before you build a query, it is useful to make yourself familiar with the ontology entries and which terms you can use. This is only a snippet of the CDOC CRM ontology. Go to their page and take a look through the properties and entities. Now go back to the Fondazione Zeri endpoint and try the simple example. Go and manipulate it and add and delete entries. Then take it to the Faros endpoint.
one of the most well-known Sparkle endpoints is provided by Wikidata. Wikidata is the normed entry database that stands behind Wikipedia and works like its spider in the net. In theory, every person, place, object should have a Wikidata entry that connects the same item to all its mentions in Wikipedia. And these data can be queried through the Wikidata Sparkle query. There are two options how you can use this service. The Wikidata Query Service and the Wikidata Query Builder. With the Wikidata Query Builder, you will find a guided entry model where you place your keywords. The parameters will help you through the semantic RDF structure of triples. It is an easy way to get started without knowing much about Sparkle and the semantic web. For the query service instead, you need to know Sparkle. If this is your first time starting out, have a look at the list of examples in the folder above and search for a readily filled out query of your interest. We are doing the same here and start with one of the query examples regarding the Louvre artworks in display cases. Running this query turns a result format for these respective images. The icon on the, the lower left tells you what the output of your result list is. This is set on image grid. You can change it to tabular data from here and look at the entries for this query. Let us analyze how this is built. When you hover your cursor over the entries in the live version above, it will tell you what these, all, so what these codes stand for. You may notice immediately that this query does not have prefixes. This is because Wikidata queries usually use the internal data schema. VD is the code for subject and object, and VDT for the predicate in the query. The select line lists the entries of the tabular search results. Item will return a code for the item. Item level, instead, will also give you the name of the item, as some queries only return the code. The same goes for the material. Note also that whatever is listed behind the hashtag belongs to general information regarding this query and is not part of the query itself. The first triple of the query is built of the question regarding an item. The Wikidata code for location is P276 and the question regarding the museum case. The next line says that the case is an instance of a vitrine then followed by the case having the location in a room, and so on. You can easily look up these codes by hoovering with your cursor over them, or in case you are building a query and do not know the code, you can search for them in Wikidata. The whole query again goes in curly brackets, followed by a few optional entries. Here we want the item list to gather with an image, and we want the results in English and French. Here is another query which you can go and alternate as you like. It is about museums in London with an ivory collection. It also includes a map with the location of these museums. Therefore, the output data is either a map view or the tabular view or the image view. You can define what you like to see coming up first. Let us look at it closer. We are looking at museums with their codes and museum levels, giving additionally also the names of the museums. We are searching for the coordinates of this museum to show it on a map and the material with its name and the date, the department with its name and the image. You will notice that this query is formed differently. The first query phrase is running over three lines until it's full stop. These three lines are connected. The museum is queried as an instance of and the subclass of a museum, followed by the code for a museum. The next line still refers to the museum and asks for the location in London. The following line is still connected and asks for the coordination location of the same museum. You see that certain information does not need to be repeated if it all refers to the same question. The hashtag behind each line contains information regarding the codes and what they stand for. 
Everything behind the hashtag is not part of the query, but only explanation. At the bottom, the optional information regards the results being in English and possibly containing an image if there is one. Now, here is a task for you. Go and try and add more information to this last query. Now that you're familiar with the principles of querying data with Sparkle, you might think about how you can use it in your research. You see that there is a difference when you use Sparkle through cultural heritage institutions or through Wikidata, as Wikidata uses its own ontology, whereas the institutions are relying on a variety of publicly available ontologies or sometimes even homegrown ontologies. This makes it more complicated for the user. You need to make yourself familiar with a variety of ontologies to get complex and telling results. The institutions may also have limited the categories you can query, but not making all of their data available to the service. But querying the institutions directly may give you more complex and comprehensive data on a certain topic, as the data infrastructure is more homogenic and built by subject professionals. Which endpoint to query depends, of course, on your research questions. If you need to know more about a specific museum or objects, categories, or if you like to get an orientation in a field. There are a lot of lessons available online, either on the semantic web, on knowledge graphs, and on Wikidata queries. Here are some introductions to Sparkle and the semantic web and some further information on Sparkle. We welcome you back to our next video on art history data on the web. In video number four, you will learn about a data query using API and Jupyter Notebook.